One Piece. One Piece. Chapter 959. Samurai. Samurai. So, this was a little bit dry for me, but uh, the chapter here was kind of like taking us through a light flashback of uh, what caused these people to not show up. And I right. guess the cause was that Orochi just blew up all the connectors to that harbor. Pretty much. Uh, the, the, I guess, highlight at the end is that it looks like we're going into the usual One Piece flashback in a major arc of something that happened like 100 years ago with Kozuki Odin, finally. All the build-up, all the the talking, all of the connecting to Roger's crew. Finally, 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 I guess the next few chapters, probably to the end of the year, is going to be spent exploring the flashback of Kozuki Odin, which I am actually interested in. Um, do I think it could have came sooner? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they probably could have lined all this other shit up way sooner but hopefully what it does mean though is after this flashback part is done Oda will have finally got his mind right into how he wants the final fight of Ma- Wano to move and we'll just jump straight into that because I'm not really I would say like I thought Whole Cake was bad but at least Whole Cake was seasoned with um enough hype and enough fights. The only thing that sucked is just Sanji didn't get shine. But I feel like there was enough of like action going on to push me through Whole Cake. What I feel like Wano suffers from is this the arc that you want the most action in. And it seems to have so many lulls of like unnecessary story that yeah. I'm just like, this doesn't add to anything right now. Like a lot of the Luffy fights, like that Hold'em stuff in the beginning, the sumo stuff. Like, none of it added <laughs> to anything. <laughs> like, it wasn't callbacks or anything. Like, there was a couple of moments, yeah, like, all the stuff outside the story. But uh, <clears throat> I felt like everything that I saw with Luffy in this arc was totally not needed. Mm. Um, that's... Uh, for that exact point, I think that's actually... I actually, I actually am going to disagree with you a little bit. Um, I think like a normal formula that kind of happens with One Piece is that when they introduce like to a new land, um, mm-hmm. Luffy does some dumb ish and like pretty much makes a ruckus, makes like a loud noise, and mm-hmm. like ish like immediately gets real. Where then they get introduced to the um, uh, we'll call it the the rebellion or like the the couple of characters that ain't about what's happening in society at the moment. Then they start to get like a small following, and then they finally fight back. In this case, like like the large noise was effing with Hold'em, effing with the big sumo, saying like, okay, there's a new player on the scene causing a ruckus yet again via Luffy style, and uh, then he gets hooked up with um, what's her face, um, Otoko. And then, like, get introduced to, like, you know, like, the, the, the poor villages, et cetera, et cetera. And then he finds out what's really going down in Wano. So I think there's still, they still technically use that formula going on. The biggest problem, though, with how they did it is simply how big of a deal this country, Wano, is in respect to the entire world, period, because Kaido been effing with it. And like uh, Kozuki Odin was a part of a Gold Roger squad, et cetera, et cetera. And then not yeah. to mention like the war that's going to happen. That's going to be like the biggest war One Piece has ever seen. The, yeah. the biggest problem with this is just like the actual scale of it all. That they probably yeah. should have flipped up the normal formula even like a little bit to accommodate for that. But I don't really think they did. So it's just not fitting right. Um, mm-hmm. But as a... You know, as far as this chapter goes, I was a little, it was a little eh. I mean, like, I, I had a feeling that, like, something like this was going to be the reason why they couldn't meet up. I know it wasn't going to be, like, super serial or, like, any hardcore, like, background fights or anything like that was really going right. to happen. It was all just, uh, oh, like, they're going to, you know, like. That be actually would have been colder, though, to be honest. Wait a second. Like- I said that actually would have been a colder excuse, to be honest, if he just dropped, like, big guns at each of, like, the people who's trying to come to the harbor's location. So, like, he was like, oh, bam, I'm going to drop the numbers over here for these niggas. 
or I'm going to send like Queen over here for these niggas. Like that I felt like would have added to the hype. Um, and then I don't know, been a great cliffhanger to go into the other arc. But with this one, I was just like, oh, that's a goofy plan. <laughs> I mean, it worked, but it just wasn't like, <laughs> special. Like, I was just like, oh, okay, sure. So he blew up all the bridges. Like, I, I don't know. It just you don't have to be smart in one piece. That's that's what I thought as I was thinking. So just like that. Nothing about that plan was inventive. And the guy who, like, the people who thought, because uh, I forget. Yeah, one of the panels, like, one of the people blowing up the bridge goes, like, why the fuck are we even doing this? This seems stupid. Like, that guy should be killed on the spot. Like, I felt <laughs> like that was, like, the dumbest question you could ask in an already dumb plan. Like, it was very straightforward. Just blow this shit up. I think there's a rebellion happening. Like, the fact that you even had to convince people that weren't even affected by blowing up those bridges to just blow them up. Like, that part bothered me that he would ask that question. I just felt like somebody should have sniped that dude on the spot. Like, nothing about <laughs> him was, was like, oh, my God, this is so smart. Like, just not, like, no, let's stop them from getting to this place that I think they're probably trying to go to. Yeah. No, well, yeah. <laughs> just thought that shit was good for me. I was just like, what the fuck? Did I really just read him say that? Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, like, Odin, I guess, is smart. I mean, by One Piece standards, like, you don't need that much strategy. So, I guess this was a smart plan, but... Um, like I said, I think I'm more ready for this flashback because I'm so bored with what is going yeah. on with the Wano. Because I, I knew it was coming. We all know it's coming. This happens in every arc. Um, yeah. But I actually didn't care for it as much in Whole Cake. Uh, but I, I definitely am excited for it now. And I think it's just because Odin has a lot of hype built behind him, but I'm also, I know how these flashback goes, and I feel like he's going to end up, mm, they, you could already see how they layered the goofiness, you know what I mean? Mm. In, because, like, in the last panel, they um, talk about, like, oh, here's the, mm, I forgot what they call them exactly, but they were like, here's the, the fuck is it? I'm pulling it up right now. Oh, what, uh, oh, overbearing man? Is that what you mean? Um, yeah. Was, uh, like, he's what? he's failed yet another uh, voyage. Die already, you good for nothing. So you already see, like, he's he's getting, like, the typical, like, I don't know, One Piece stamp of heroicness. I don't know what you call it, but you know how all of the lovable characters are usually like just people that get shitted on in their hometowns or something for some reason. Oh, so I, I just feel like he's getting that kind of vibe. Yeah, the kind of underdog. He's trying to accomplish some goal that pretty much seems impossible at the time, but then he finally yeah. does it and then gets respect of everybody. Kind of like right. that. Yeah, everyone thinks he's some type of kook, but right. he's actually like super courageous and inventive and shit like that. But I just hope they don't. Which tells me that I think he's going to be, like, goofy. And I just hope that he's not. Because they just put too much respect on his name with the two blades and all this other stuff. So, like, I'm I'm hoping he has the hands. The other thing that I thought was nice that they brought up was the Su Long thing. Um, it was a little bit disappointing because I felt like they're also saying, like, you're never seeing that <laughs> from these niggas right now. <laughs> and I was like, low-key. Like, yes, if if a dog buddy pulled out Su Long for him, like, I was just thinking, I was like, I don't even know why this didn't come to my head in Whole Cake, but I was just like, if dog and cat buddy had Su Long for him uh, when Jack attacked, he wouldn't have made it off that island. I don't think, personally, because they were already able to keep him at bay for 10 days, and that Su You're Long right. would have upped their power, like, I don't even know like, how at many. At least people. double. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. so they would have and then both of them at that double type form, yeah. I don't think Jack would have left that island alive. No, but, no joke. Like I like when they when they mentioned it in this chapter, I was like, oh dick, you're right. Like like they're gonna yeah. actually have like some pretty strong mother effing soldiers going down. Like it's gonna right. be pretty lit. I'm um, hoping so. that like what would have been nice, like because I'm still on the chopper, um, is gonna learn something from a meek theory. Uh, it's going to oh. learn something from the Minx theory. 
I, it would be nice if Chopper was able to invent something similar or somehow use his rumble balls to do that. Like, and, and I mean to help in this war more than just for his personal thing. Like, I, it would be nice if he was able to go like, oh, I created something that's similar to like a fake blood moon that will be able to have these people use their like too long form, but maybe only for like a minute or two, you know, the two, the typical tropper limitations. Yeah, yeah. Or he made like a modified rumble ball that helps him and like a few of the minks to unlock this um, too long form. Yeah, but I, from what I've seen in this arc, it doesn't look like they were mm, helping him prepare that at all. Mm-hmm. So it's probably not going to happen, but it would have been nice if they like gave Chopper some screen time and allowed sure. him to work in that direction. Because I would have been like, oh, okay, this would be cool to see. But right. we'll see. True. I mean, like low key, they could have even, um, I mean, it, it depends on how technical. Whatchamacallit. Kind of like DBGT, where like they would make some kind of like Usopp or like Frankie make some kind of machine that like uh, yeah. the Minks can even look at and like and still get like triggered the same way that the moon would trigger them to get too long for them. So yeah. I mean like yeah, they definitely think there's options there to try and uh, utilize for too long form whenever they feel. Um, it would just depend on when, I suppose. But. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, the last note, at least I wanted to make regarding um, the whole blowing up the bridges thing. I think that their mentioning of Jinbei pretty much hinted that Jinbei is going to be the one that brings them all together via water-ish somehow. You know what I mean? Oh, shit. So, so I think Jinbei is going to be like, bruh, like I can literally F around with water however I want. Like what y'all want to do? Walk on the seafloor? All right, I got you. Like, you know, like something, I don't know. Something like OP, like deliver the whole squad pretty much to the island and then they start boxing yeah that would be but. solid uh i would i mean it would be good for the fields part i don't care as much about the whole jimbei being left on whole cake i knew he wasn't gonna die but um right. i think for those people who care about those fields that'll definitely be a good like way to like ease him back in and then after this war is over that would 100% mean that um, he's official in the crew, which if you want to call Whole Cake and Wano one arc, um, or if you want to call like Fishman to Wano one saga, that would like be a nice tie up, like a nice tie on the bow for like the saga. It's just like Jinbei joins at the end. Yeah. Now let's start m- probably what I would assume would be like of the one piece story like yeah. probably going to enter the final right? this this wano fight is probably going to lead to like the setup for the big war that they're talking about and then uh-huh. and whatever happens after that is kind of like preparation for that you know the, the supernovas are out there right. form their alliances however they be. like right. jimbe is now part of the crew which i think would probably be like the last member they really need true to seal it up unless they're gonna let law join because i also feel like law might be able to join in either like uh the way the other niggas joined in don flamingo's arc like that aligned capacity of just like my crew is a yeah. part of your crew but also yeah, he doesn't see. have a big enough crew to me where i could see him just become a member anyways because i go like you only got the pick of my guy <laughs> like you have have those other guys, but we only really know the uh, bear or panda, whatever you want to call it. Like I even forgot about the dude out of um, what the fuck was it called? It wasn't impel down, but he was a he was like a slave to the uh, what do they call those guys? The the celestial dragons. That one guy uh, with the big oh head. oh like the really the like the the. The giant almost. Um, yeah, yeah. He had him join his squad, but like we forgot about him after that arc. So it's like really <laughs> his only crew member is that panda. Like that would be the only person I feel like, oh, what are they going to do about the panda? That's the only person I think <laughs> about when it comes to like dissolving the heart pirates. Yeah. After that, I don't really care. Like even same thing with kids crew right now. Like it's just that he probably has enough niggas where it would be odd to break up his crew because I think he has a big enough ship. But, like, Law... Nah, bro. There's, like, five niggas on his crew total. Like, if he wanted to just say fuck it and join, 
the straw hats? He could. Yeah, I mean, like, homie's ship was literally a submarine. So, like, he didn't even have yeah. a ship. He had, like, he oh, literally God. had, like, the smallest submarine to ride around with, like, him and, like, his three-fold goons. So, I mean. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, man. But, no, uh, I mean, Kid, actually, that, that, that's a good point for you to mention, though. I mean, Kid, I mean, from what I from what I remember, I mean, Kid Squad pretty much got, like, annihilated, or at least, like, you know, after the betrayal of the team-up. So, I don't even think Kid really even has a squad anymore, at least not really, unless he just, like, after after all this is over, he just gains some, you know, some random kids to start up his ish again. But I think, like, him and Killer are, like, really the only official members to his squad right now, too. So, yeah. no, that's that's definitely curious to see how that's going to play out also, I suppose. Yeah. Um, snap. I'm kind of disappointed with how he did that, too, because somebody like Capone, like, we got a, a fucking bird's eye view of his shitty niggas, you know? <laughs> mm. I don't know if Gastino is still a part of the crew or not, but... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but still, like, the niggas outside of Capone, we saw that, like, oh, okay, he has a, a quote-unquote five-man band. And I felt like we kind of deserve that from the other supernovas, at least the way One Piece builds its worlds. Yeah. So I'm a little bit disappointed that it seems like for most of the other supernovas, we've seen that it looks like they're pretty much solo dolo. Maybe a rogue, he's shown to have, like, some extra backup niggas. Like I said, law, they don't even put respect on the other niggas. There's only the panda and that one guy from jail that seemed like they actually would have a one-on-one -on -one fight that you would see in the show. Mm -hmm. And then everyone else seems to have, like, that one, and maybe they showed you their second who looks different. And then everyone else is just, like, regularly drawn people in their crew, which I'm kind of like, I, I wish you guys had more of a build like Luffy's crew did. Mm. You know, and I, I would have expected that, honestly, because I'm assuming all of them started from like the mud minus X Drake. X Drake probably just was like, hey, yeah, uh, depends on what type of way he was on. He's either like, hey, I'm doing this covert mission. I like you. You join my crew. Or he was like, hey, I'm defecting from the Marines. I see all of you guys want to, too. So y'all just join me. But uh, all of the other pirates, I'm assuming, started from the mud like Ricky. So I mean, I said Ricky, like Luffy. So <laughs> thinking that they would at least have that same type of crew setup where they meet people and only allow them to join if they're somewhat strong. And then once they get enough strong niggas, they start going, okay, we'll take these like weak, nameless niggas. Yeah. Uh, whatever. We'll see. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. But, oh man, um, I'm trying to think. That was pretty much all the big stuff. Yeah, we're pretty much just gonna get into this flashback. They may give us some more info, but it looks like yeah. we're gonna be. Yeah, I think yeah we're probably gonna be in this flashback arc for I don't know maybe three full chapters if I had to guess maybe. I'm thinking with breaks. Uh, cause I think did they say in this chapter? One of these chapters said they was taking a break next week. I don't know if it's Promise Neverland or this one. Uh, it was it was definitely Promise Neverland. I don't think uh, I don't think there's any others, but Promise Neverland. They're not going to be in the next issue. Yeah, but given breaks, holidays, I felt like we're we're going to be stuck in this flashback until the end of the year. That's my oh, thought. Think so. Just, oh. I feel like probably going to be a couple of breaks season in there. Golden week, mm. boom! It'll be next year already, and then Damn. that's crazy. We'll be on to the final battle to end off. To start off 2020, and we'll see how good that goes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just they're just hyping it up and they're building it up to be just so large. It's just curious where they're going to actually shine all the light. So, right, I agree. But all right, well, I'm ready to rate this one. I probably yeah, give yeah. it. Um, I probably give this like um, maybe a decent trash plus. I don't think the bridge plan was anything special. I'm semi hyped for the the flashback just because I feel like everything has been just pulling me along with One Piece. So that's why it's just nice to have like a refresher or a change of pace in the story. Mm. Um, because they're just like, he, Oda's just like splashing dots on all of the other side things and that aren't related to Wano, but related to Wano, like the reverie and stuff. So. 
Uh, I would just give it a decent trash plus. Uh, the chapter itself wasn't that great, and you can see by the review we talked about a bunch of shit that really wasn't related to the chapter. Um, and then, yeah, you're right. And then the part with Odin, I'm excited about, but obviously I didn't get enough of it in the end of this chapter to mm-hmm. really have it change the rating that much. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'll um. I'll give it a slightly higher rating. I'll give it um, I'll give it a decent minus for the simple fact that I did. It's like it's like I was kind of expecting a lame plan like this after they were saying the you, uh, you know like something happened. So it's not like I was exactly disappointed since my uh, my hopes weren't that high in the first place. Um, <laughs> I was interested to see Slash kind of like forgot about Jimbe and him like the possibility of him joining the war. It's good. I, I've always been like um, a Jimbe fan. He's always been like a cool guy to me. Um, as uh, them also including about like the moon for the Sioux Long. I think that's going to be dope uh, to see like uh, like the meat tribe. So I got a little bit of hype about that one. Um, and then uh, the Kozuki Odin arc start. I mean, not Kozuki Odin arc, but like the flashback. Um, I feel like that's going to be interesting too. So it's more of a there, there, there's just like a slight hype build up for me, comp- coupled with the fact that you know it wasn't really disappointed because I saw it coming. So like I won't call it exactly decent trash, but I'll, I'll give it a decent minus though. 